Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about Millikan's oil drop experiment, guys. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Right, so before watching this video, make sure that you have a basic understanding of electric fields. I put my video in the description and make sure you watch that video before watching this one. Otherwise, this just won't make sense. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so Millikan's oil drop experiment. This experiment is really important because it led us to the charge of the electron being 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You may have come across that previously, but now we're going to do an experiment which actually validates this, that the electron charge is 1.6 times by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so we're going to talk about the experiment. So here I've got a canister and it's full of oil. The canister is going to shoot out the oil, so oil droplets will be fired out of the canister over here. Okay, so oil droplets are being fired out right now. Uh, as the oil travels um, and exits the canister, there is some friction, and the friction causes the oil droplets to become negatively charged. So look, they are negatively charged oil droplets. And as you can see, they are falling downwards over here. They're falling down. Right, these oil droplets are now going to enter an electric field. So this is an electric field here. So let's draw one of the oil drops as it falls down, and now it's entered the electric field. The electric field now, this is the positive terminal, therefore let's place it as positive over here. Therefore this pulls all the electrons onto it, making the top plate positive. There we go. Right. The bottom plate, this one over here, is negative, so therefore this one becomes negative. Okay, yeah, this terminal is negative, repels all the electrons onto here, making this one with loads of electrons, hence it's negatively charged. Right, so first of all, uh, we'll draw some of the field lines. So this is the electric field, and look, the electric field lines are going from the positive to the negative over here. So make sure you can identify that we have an electric field right now. Now from here, we're going to uh, label some of the forces acting upon the oil drop. Right, so I'm just going to remove this line over here. First of all, there's a force due to gravity pulling it down. Yes, force due to gravity causing it to fall down. The oil droplet is negatively charged, so what's going to happen is, you know the top plate is positive and the oil droplet is negatively charged, it will therefore be attracted upwards, so, yeah, so it will move upwards here. So what's going to happen is there's a force due to the electric field pulling it up. Electric field here. Right, so we're going to do this, we're going to view this from the side over here, so here's my eyeball, here's the eye over here, and we're going to view it using a microscope right now. What's going to happen is the following. We're going to increase the potential difference across the supply until the force due to gravity is equal to the force due to the electric field. And that means that the forces are balanced. We'll be able to see that the oil droplet will hover. So it will hover and remain stationary here. And we can view it with the microscope here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If you remember Newton's first law, if the resultant force upon an object is zero, it will remain stationary or move at a constant speed. Here it's remaining stationary. Okay, so now let's talk about the forces. So here's my oil droplet over here. We know that there's a force downwards at the equilibrium point due to gravity, force due to gravity going down. And at the top, we have the force due to electric field going up, force due to the electric field going up, electric field going upwards here. Okay, now let's do a bit of maths, guys, and we can work out an expression for the charge on the oil drop. So let's do a bit of maths now to work out the charge on the oil drop. Okay, so first of all, we know that at the equilibrium point over here, when it's hovering, the force due to the electric field is equal to the force due to gravity. Okay, right, so the force due to the electric field. The electric field strength is equal to the force acting per unit charge. So therefore, the force is going to be the electric field strength times by the charge. That will be equal to the force due to gravity acting on the oil drop, which is the mass times by gravity over here. Mass times by gravity. Now, from here, we're going to do the following. I'm going to get rid of the mass here with the idea of density. Don't forget, it's a round oil drop over here. So obviously, it's a spherical oil drop uh, of radius r. There we go. So we know that the density of the oil is equal to the mass of the oil. So mass of the oil divided by the volume. OK, so density is equal to mass divided by volume. OK, and the volume, don't forget, it's a sphere. So therefore, the volume is going to be 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So the density of the oil is equal to the mass 
of the oil divided by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Excellent stuff. Therefore, guys, we're going to substitute this into here, get rid of the mass over here. So the electric field strength times by the charge, that remains the same, is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed, uh, the density of the oil at times by gravity here. Density of the oil times by gravity. Don't forget r is the radius of the ball. r is the radius of the ball here. Now, from here, we're going to get rid of the electric field strength. So we know the potential difference across the plates is V. So that's the same potential difference across there. That's the same PD across there. And now let's talk about the separation of the plates. The top plate and the bottom plate, let's say it's separated by distance D over here. The electric field strength is also equal to the volts per unit distance, yeah, or volt per meter. So therefore, this voltage divided by this distance will also be equal to electric field strength. We can now substitute it into here. So now it becomes VQ over D is equal to 4 over 3 pi R cubed rho oil times by G over here. Now rearranging this to make Q the subject of the formula. Q is equal to 4 pi R cubed density of the oil times by gravity. Yes, and look, we bring the D up, so D goes there and the V goes underneath. It's over there. And don't forget the free over here. There we go. So now, everyone, we have an expression for the charge on the oil drop. So the charge on the oil drop is equal to 4 pi r cubed, density of the oil, gravity times by the separation of the plates, divided by 3v. That's going to be the charge on the oil drop here. OK, so you might be thinking, oh, surely this is going to be equal to electron charge, but we're not quite there yet. When you're doing this experiment, it's really hard to measure the radius of the ball. It actually is quite hard to do this. Think about it. It's an oil drop. How are you going to measure the radius of the ball? So we need to do another experiment which will enable us to calculate r. And then we're going to use that value of r into this equation. And now we've got an expression for the charge. OK, right. So how can we determine the radius of the ball? How can we determine the radius of the ball? It's a very similar experiment. It looks like the following. OK, so finding the radius of the ore drop. So if we're going to find the radius of the ore drop, it looks almost the same as before. But what we're going to do is the following. We are going to turn off the potential difference. OK, so we're going to turn off the potential difference now. And as you can see, there's no longer a potential difference. And therefore, there's no longer a force upward due to the electric field. There's only a force downward due to gravity over here. OK, now what will happen to this ore drop as it falls down? OK, so hopefully you can see that as it falls down, what will happen is there will be a resistance force that starts to build up. That will be due to the medium it's traveling in. So right now there's air over here. OK, so now let's talk about this drag force due to the air here. So let's just draw uh, the oil droplet right now. So let's just say this is the oil droplet. Initially, the only force acting on it is going to be the force due to gravity. Yes, yeah? so the force due to gravity pulling it downwards over here. But then as it falls, what happens is we know that there's a resistance force that starts to build up. So yes, there's the force due to gravity that remains constant. But what happens is there's a force due to the drag that starts to build up over here. And then eventually these two forces balance out over here. So the force due to gravity will actually match up to this force due to the drag over here at this point. So the force due to the drag here. There we go. So hopefully this reminds you of the idea of terminal velocity. Hopefully you can remember from uh, your physics lessons that Velocity against time, initially uh, the object will accelerate, yes, it will, it will accelerate, but eventually the velocity will level off over here because it reaches its terminal velocity. That is the same principle here. So what you'll actually see if you're looking at it through a microscope is that you will see it fall at a constant velocity as it goes down. You will see it fall at a constant velocity here. Okay, right, so now let's tie this all together with a bit of maths. First of all, um, the force due to drag. So the force due to drag is going to be equal to the force due to gravity. OK, force due to gravity. So the drag force, we're going to give it to you. The force due to drag is going to be equal to 6 pi r eta v. OK, so you might not know what they all stand for, but let's just go through them again. So r is once again the radius of the ball over here. Uh, Eta is the viscosity, so let's put that down. Eta is the viscosity, uh, the viscosity of the fluid, of the fluid. And if you don't know what that is, basically the viscosity is a measure of how difficult it is for that fluid to flow. The greater the viscosity, the harder it is for that liquid to flow. 
and v is going to be the terminal velocity. So v is going to be the terminal velocity here, which it's traveling at. v is going to be the terminal velocity. And that's easy to measure because you can look at the distance that the oil droplet is traveling at a constant velocity divided by the time. So this distance, and we can do velocity is equal to distance over time here to work out that velocity. Right, now back to the formula. Let's start to plug in the formulas in. So it's going to be 6 pi r e to v is equal to m times by g. So 6 pi r e to v is equal to m times by g. Now, getting rid of the mass. So once again with the density. So density of the oil is equal to the mass divided by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Therefore, we know that the mass is once again equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed density of the oil itself, putting that into here. So it's going to be 6 pi r e to v is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed density of oil times by gravity over here. Now look what's the same on both sides. We've got r the same on both sides and pi, so we can cancel them out. So it becomes on this side 6 e to v is equal to 4 over 3 r squared rho oil times by g over here. Now from here we're just going to rearrange it to make r the subject. What do we get? So let's do r squared. r squared is equal to 3 times by 6 e to v at the top divided by 4 the density of the oil times by gravity over here. So therefore it becomes r will eventually become the square root of 18 e to v divided by 4 density of oil times by gravity and therefore finally we can just fact get rid of the 18 over 4 so the radius is equal to 9 times by the viscosity times by the velocity divided by 2 the density of the oil times by gravity all of that square rooted and now look guys we have an expression for the radius of the oil drop this is much easier to measure than before because before you couldn't do it because you just need to know the viscosity of the fluid which is the viscosity of the air the velocity, the distance over time, the density of the oil, and the gravity here. And now you've got your value of R. Right, so now you've got your value of R, you can plug it into the previous one over here at the top. So therefore you can work out Q using that method we used to find out R. Okay, so I'm not going to do all of that right now, but hopefully you can see this is how they worked out the value of the charge here on each of those oil drops from this experiment here. Okay, so now from here, let's talk about the results of this actual experiment and how did it lead us to the electron charge being 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Right, so over here, guys, are some sample results from the experiment. Okay, so first of all, look at them. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19, 9.6 times by 10 to the minus 19, and 3.2 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Right, what do you notice about all the oil drop charges? What do you notice about all of them? Well, hopefully you can see that they are all multiples of the electron charge. This is 1e, yes, 1 times by that. This is 3e, this one is 6 times by e, and this one is 2e. So what they found out is that the oil drop charges were always a multiple of the electron charge. So the charge that which they found out of the oil drop was always a multiple of the electron charge here. And obviously, therefore, they worked out that the electron charge was going to be 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And that's the importance of this experiment, guys, that the charges of all the oil drops were an integer multiple of the electron charge. And obviously they worked out the charge using this formula and they used this formula over here to work out the radius of the oil drop. Okay, so I know this was a tricky lesson, guys, as there are multiple things attached to it. Make sure you look at both the practicals and you make sure you understand how we determined the value of Q, the charge in the first one, this one over here, this formula, and how we got the radius of the oil drop over here and how this led to us determining that the electron charge is 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Because look, all of the oil drop charges were multiples of that value here. And that's it for another session of Surrounded Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going, and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.